<laughs> Sashi, I'm going to take you back uh, uh, down the memory lane. Right. So <clears throat> I was going through your profile and I see that uh, you've not created this empire overnight. You started fairly early mm -hmm. in your life becoming an entrepreneur. So what, what, what was it that inspired you to start so early to become an entrepreneur? Um, at the young age of 24, what made me turn an entrepreneur? Become an entrepreneur. Good question. Right. You know, I don't know how many of you really know. Uh, my family, my uncles and my father, had a joint uh, family business, uh, which was not a very large business, but it was large enough to be recognized in a small town where we grew up. We had a business venture which was dealing with wholesale of various commodities which you consume on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Like the grains and oil and, uh, you know, day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, merchandise, and et cetera. So <clears throat> unfortunately, over a period of time, the business did very well. We had a great reputation, but unfortunately, the business didn't do well for different reasons. Uh, so. We are a large family, and a uh, lot of us, cousins and everybody, used to stay, stay together. Uh, the business went down to an extent where the business accumulated liabilities. So that's not good news. I was just about 17 or 18 years old at that time. Uh, so I had no future if I were to stay there. So I had to move out of that place uh, with obviously a lot of responsibilities in terms of you know, taking care of my family, uh, uh, you know, uh, contributing to some of the liabilities that was accumulated. Uh, father was not very young anymore, uh, etc. So also along with the business, my father was a, was a very renowned political leader. Uh, he was a member of All India Congress Committee since 1950s. Uh, very noble and kind man. Uh, you know, when he used to get up in the morning, I used to see at least about 20 people waiting to meet him, uh, asking for help, something or the other. Uh, that is how the, the, the day would start. So, um, you know, being uh, uh, born to uh, a good family and my mother, obviously like every mother, uh, used to be dedicated life to the children. Uh, so you grew up with that kind of a culture of connection to the family and connection to the society and uh, having he been associated with the Congress party at that time, the party also used to stand for uh, a great ideologies. So the, the love to the nation and you know, all those value systems were quite a bit of ingrained. Together with that, uh, the family also used to be very spiritual. So you know, there used to be a lot of pujas and a lot of prayers every day and stuff like that. So that's how you grew up and uh, as, a, as a college student, uh, I used to be a bit notorious. Uh, I used to have my own, um, you know, team members, you call, you know, followers. Uh, we used to have our own fun. We used to have our groups, sometimes get into fights and stuff like that. So anyway, so I then also became the president of the National Students' Union while I was in the final year of my college. Uh, so I had used to have a lot of followers and admirers and I used to be a singer, I used to be a, a dancer, I used to be an actor, and I used to study also well. I used to also very much engage into sports. So um, that's, that's how the college life went. And then after finishing the college, I um, uh, was wondering what should I be doing. So finally, I ended up in Bombay. One of my close relatives offered me a job uh, in a shipping agency company. That's how I started. And uh, four years I worked there, and I dedicated my four years uh, to develop myself as a professional. I was thoroughly enjoying the job that I did. Uh, I joined shipping. I just loved shipping. Uh, believe me, and you know, I, uh, I, for me particularly, I never seen a ship before. And uh, suddenly you end up meeting uh, people from different culture. Uh, you know, the pressure of work of getting the ships loaded, unloaded getting the ships to berth in a port which used to be congested. Ships used to wait for 20, 30 days in those days for, for the berth. So maneuvering with the, the port officials and 
getting the cargo cleared through the gates with the port officials and customs. It was a, it was a nightmare. Uh, so anyway, I enjoyed every bit of it and uh, gained myself a lot of experience, knowledge about international business, and then, uh, uh, then uh, you know, uh, and then made a lot of friends in the industry. So that's how the uh, the evolution of four years happened. So end of uh, fourth year, uh, I was not satisfied uh, with the, the, the with the money that I was making, and because I had the responsibility, so I decided to start something on my own. Uh, it was not easy. I had a twenty-five thousand rupees of saving, and I decided to bet on it. I had a partner, but that didn't last for long. Uh, only a couple of years, and I had a couple of other people who also supported me at that time, or rather joined me. Uh, young people, four young people. So I, we started the business of doing handling of uh, ships in the port of Bombay. These good friends from the industry helped me to get some of these jobs. And that is how I started. So fortunately, things started falling into place and uh, you know, business grew. And uh, next 10 years, I spent my time in building that business. Uh, so this entrepreneurial uh, journey just started and uh, success makes you feel more happy and success breeds success, they say. Sure. And uh, word spread, words go out there and you know, um, business, uh, more business starts coming to you when you do a good job. And uh, then whatever profit you make, you reinvest in the business uh, where it is required because uh, a transportation business without having your own equipment is very, very difficult business to be in because you are always dependent on third party to supply you the equipments and they may not give you at a time when you really need it. Or it comes with too much of cost or too much of effort to get the equipments to, because the ships can't wait. One of the biggest USP for us is that competing with the big established transport companies was that we know the business, we understand shipping, we are able to give them a better, uh, at least a connect in our mind, understand their problems better than a transportation company because they don't know shipping, they don't understand the pressure of shipping. Uh, so, you know, uh, but you can't do it again and again and again and again without too much of effort. And obviously, when you make investments in the right equipment, it gives you also the return. And it also helped me at that time to do also the tax planning because if, when you buy an asset, means you get 40% depreciation. So if you bought a 10 lakh rupees of worth of equipment, so you can write off your income by 4 lakhs of rupees. So you would end up saving tax on the four lakhs of rupees. So that was the other motivation to invest in, in the, your own equipment. So that's how we started building a fleet. And uh, as you build the fleet, you had to go look for more businesses. Because they say, in your, if you have 100 vehicles of your own to manage, you must have at least business for 200 vehicles. So the dependence, what I thought, that will go away was actually increased. Because to keep this 100 occupied all the time, you must have business for 200. So then your dependence on third party requirement always continued. So that's, that's how the game is. So, you know, you're always on a treadmill, they say. Once you're in business, you're always on a treadmill. There is always something, there is always uh, issues to deal with. So I never got tired. And uh, you know, fortunately for me, uh, uh, very early, maybe five years later, Umesh joined although he was very young at that time. Uh, he was little, um, didn't know anything about the business, so he learned a lot. Then came Adarsh, so he uh, uh, some, did some work on his own, then he, he decided to merge, he came and joined, and ever since both of them stood by me, as all of you know, I said it multiple times, they've been a great uh, pillar of strength for me. Uh, I can delegate a lot, depend a lot, and we have, of course there are a lot of other people who are also very dependable to me, so it gives you some, some sort of a confidence when you have stability in an organization. Um, you know. And the other factor is right from the beginning, because of the experience of my family, uh, which one of the reasons why the family business went bust is because there were no checks and balances. There was no proper accounting. There was nothing like uh, an audit. Audit probably is never heard of. Uh, so they don't know what their liabilities were, uh, what their tax implications could be. So they got into trouble from all sides. So that's taught me a very big lesson at a very young stage that put your house in order. Do little less business, doesn't matter. So that taught me that lesson. And I'm always a very firm believer. You would have noticed I'm a little bit paranoid sometimes about 
risk management and internal audit and checks and balances and second level and third level. You know, uh, so that's the reason, look at our organization today. We have no tax liability. We don't have a legal issue. We don't have capitalization in the company. We do, we're not excessively borrowed as an organization. Uh, we all are able to sleep very well in the night, right? So, except of course, the pressures are there. I'm not saying it is not that simple, but we don't have the pressures like the many other industrial houses who, who go through these kind of a pressures and uh, many businesses go bust because of that. Uh, so uh, I don't know whether I answered your question fully, but you know, then, uh, then many of you know we started All Cargo, and I don't want to repeat, you know that, and you've written, uh, you, uh, you read about it quite a bit, and, uh, uh, and uh, here we are. And, you know, and that culture and that tradition should always continue in the organization. Uh, and uh, you know, one, of the, one of the points I always keep also talking about is let's build this as an institution, because this should not last only till I'm there or I'm heading the organization, but this is something that we need to build as a legacy. So let us look at so many, they say, as per a lot of researchers, I don't know how far it is correct, accurate, but one to 3% of the organization last beyond third generation, right? I'm sure they must have thought about what I'm saying today, but you know, saying like walk the talk, Right? I mean, unless collectively we, we don't practice to build uh, an organization which is going to last, which is going to last beyond generations, is what we, sh we, we would really be very, very proud about. You know, that's what uh, uh, is what my next thinking. And uh, you know, I al also always think about the future. Uh, current is something you can see. Future, that is relatively easier. But future is something none of us have seen. So if we don't think about the future and take corrective measures about the future, it is, uh, for me, is the big, biggest risk that we are living with. Uh, you know, things can be very disruptive. Uh, organizations can collapse for different reasons. Uh, so we need to plan. And obviously, it's not just about collapse. It's also about growth, how we grow the business. So, you know, I say, like I said earlier, growth is inevitable. Growth is challenging. Growth is necessary. So, you know, so. Right. Uh, you've been a serial entrepreneur, right? So what role do you see in your organization for people who are working in the organization as being internal entrepreneurs? Do you see that as an important element? Or do you see that uh, yeah. people need to follow only a process or system that's kind of laid down? No, I think uh, they, my people would, uh, would uh, agree with me and they know about it. They, that's how they conduct their day-to-day -day business. And I talk about it all the time that, uh, you know, the entrepreneurship should not start and end with me. It should be a culture in the organization. It should be across, across the organization. And I think if you, what is entrepreneurship at the end of the day? Entrepreneurship at the end of the day is ownership. It is about... Uh, it is about common sense. It is about doing the right things. Uh, it is about care. Uh, it's, it's simply that. It's, uh, yeah, obviously, you must have a business acumen, and you must have uh, uh, some skills you can acquire. Uh, all that will happen as long as you care, as long as you, you feel that, uh, that uh, uh, entrepreneurship is not necessarily that he should be a business person. Uh, you know, so like what you said, internal entrepreneurship is not existing in the company. Those companies can't last long. And uh, I, I strongly recommend, I strongly uh, try to build that culture in the company. And uh, most of our people are. I'm very happy that, uh, you know, many of them are, uh, we have multiple verticals, multiple regions, and they head the business and they lead the business. I'm not there to tell them how to do their work on a day-to-day -day basis. They, they think and act and behave and uh, feel uh, like entrepreneurs. And uh, that's the only way a company like this can be managed. So right. it is extremely critical to have that entrepreneurial mindset. I'm very, very strongly believe in that. And we encourage that uh, through multiple ways. See, they say that the only ways of really learning and growing is learn from your own successes and mistakes and yes. other people's successes and mistakes. Yeah. So tell us, a couple of uh, things that you've learned from your own successes and you've mm. learned from your own failures. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, the, yeah, the, like what you said, uh, <clears throat> those are the, the one who learn by others, mis others' mistake are the people who are more wiser. And the, the one who don't learn by their own mistake are not so wise people, right? Right. So it is always important and good to learn from others' mistake. And uh, everybody understands that. Uh, to practice that sometimes becomes a little, little difficult. Uh, and end of the day, we also are human beings. Uh, you know, everybody has a good intention intellectually uh, to do the right thing. And everybody wants to go home satisfied with the day they spent at workplace or wherever and uh, derive maximum benefit out of that, which is, which is, uh, which is there, no doubt. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, there are successes in a, in a day. There are certain times, there are certain failures in a day. Um, you know, for quite frankly, uh, yeah, there are failures. Of course, I have also gone through um, failures. Um, I'm, I'm lucky not to have too many big failures which really impacted me as a, in my career, per se. Uh, I really, really don't recall the biggest failures that I had. Um, maybe in certain investments or maybe in some properties where I made some investments where things have not really turned so much in my favor. Uh, but in terms of business, yes, so for example, we have uh, set up one of the facilities, one of the um, container depots, for example, we've done it without doing enough research, uh, more on a gut feeling that it will succeed. And uh, in spite of uh, tremendous effort uh, over the last few years, that has not really yielded the result. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the advice that I have is that when you do your best, give your best shot, put, put all the efforts, and then finally, if things doesn't work, cut your losses and shut the shop, right? So you should not be hesitant to do that either. Uh, yes, but you know that also needs to some certain process to be followed. Sure. Uh, we have a reputation to keep. We have uh, uh, we have a certain amount of pride. Yes, all that can be uh, for a certain period of time or certain amount of money. Uh, so these are the things that uh, you know. I would I would like to urge everybody to to uh, first of all don't make such big mistakes. Uh, to avoid big mistakes is possible. Like say for example, recently we decided to buy a, a buy a ship. Uh, very recently, if you look at who the customer is, it's a very decision to, easy decision to make. For this customer, you can't go wrong. But we still went through the grind of finding out. Uh, what can go wrong, where we can go wrong, uh, what are the factors that we need to keep in mind so that uh, we don't have a, have a problem tomorrow, uh, what kind of a contract conditions that we should accept, we should not accept, what are the parameters, financial parameters that in a worst scenario this will, this will have. Uh, and, uh, and then you know, kind of a de-risk to a large extent by this investment we don't have a bigger problem. Sure. We are not under pressure. I keep telling my people that we're not under pressure to make investment, but we don't want to lose opportunities as well. And that to global multinational customers like uh, uh, Holcim, right? right? So uh, we finally decided to go, but with multiple iterations, multiple discussions, uh, you know, trying to do as much research as possible, look at what can be the tax implication, how we can save tax, how we can uh, benefit by that and you know all those things if you do thoroughly you will not make a mistake sure. so this this is something that we have learned and this is something we try to uh, implement uh, also what happens many times is we make some investments markets can change uh, that is uh, those you cannot really call as a mistake because we had a certain plan we we saw india was growing and everything was going well and we did those investments and suddenly things changed. Uh, so it's uh, hundreds and thousands of businesses have suffered, like, like uh, anything. Everybody knows about it, right? So it impacted us also in some of the investment. But those are the things that you could probably can't foresee. These are, like, like you said, there can be an earthquake tomorrow, right? Nobody can predict that. Sure. So, uh, so, you know, end of the day, one has to take risk, but has to be a calculated, well, well thought about uh, uh, 
decisions. Uh, it is not just about investments, even about uh, you know, uh, hiring the right people in the organization. I think that the selection process, the, uh, the whole um, induction process of the people, uh, you know, getting them to understand the culture of the company, mentoring them to settle in their positions, uh, these are all very, very important. And, you know, and some of these mistakes can cost you uh, quite a bit because today, in today's world, uh, the cost of attrition is far higher than cost of recruitment, right? Absolutely. So um, it's very important uh, to have uh, a good process in place, good selection process in place, induction process in place, um, and, uh, you know, these are some of the things that I learned in, in failures. And obviously, in success, uh, you know, we've been able to uh, build a global company, and uh, there are, this is a huge success, uh, what we achieved uh, from, from where we were to where we are today, uh, without any global experience, without great university qualification, or a big supporter or a mentor uh, to help financially or intellectually, uh, been able to build something like this is only because of constant learning, uh, you know, constant uh, endeavor to understand what matters for the business, uh, constantly motivating people, uh, you know, learning about what is new in technology and how to leverage those technology, uh, what are the best practices that are prevailing in a, in a large global MN, multinational, for example. So by doing all that, uh, you know, one learns a lot and uh, uh, those successes catapult into more successes and that gives you more confidence and you learn a lot more. And, uh, you know, end of the day, uh, you have a great sense of accomplishment, uh, not only for me personally, uh, also as we build this organization, so many people have benefited uh, uh, and grown and happy with what they do. Uh, they got matured. Uh, they, some of them probably have left and, you know, uh, been still very successful. Uh, a lot of them are within the organization so successful. I feel extremely happy. I feel very, very happy when I see people grow and develop as, as great professionals. And, uh, you know, one of the greatest satisfaction for me is to get the right people in the organization uh, who, are, who are far more intelligent, far more, than, more qualified than me because... Uh, you know, uh, end of the day, they will do that much good. The very fact that they decided to join this organization, they obviously seen there is value in this company and there is value that they can add to this company. And that is how they made the decision to join this organization. And uh, it becomes our responsibility to give them the platform to play and, and, uh, and uh, deliver uh, value to the organization, which they will be very proud about. Right? And the organization is uh, spending time and effort in bringing them. Uh, and that is how you can only build the organizations, uh, future organizations, and bring sustainability, and make it last beyond generations. So, uh, uh, you know, so that's uh, some of the things that I have learned over the years. And, uh, you know, uh, these things also, you know, universities don't teach you. If you learn to learn every day, uh, you know, like they say, you, you, what you learn in university probably is very little. It only makes you give you certain knowledge and gives you logical thinking. And uh, it will help you to present yourself as a well-qualified person. But that doesn't guarantee you success in your workplace. It definitely facilitates you better technically and business-wise. But there is no guarantee. There are a lot of qualified people who I know are not very successful. Uh, but... Um, you know, end of the day, I, most people who are well qualified are successful, right? It is a good parameter to have and it's a good criteria to select people, but there is no guarantee, right? Not only because it is not, because people are not there, sometimes it is cultures or the attitudes or the, um, or the, um, the, the, the that sometimes there may not be alignments. Uh, so failures can happen also because of that. So overall, it's a fantastic uh, learning for me. I'm very satisfied. Uh, with what I have achieved, and uh, there's a lot more to do because there's still a lot of energy left, and uh, there is uh, surely uh, much bigger things we can do um, uh, since we now have a platform and uh, capitalization and you know a brand and uh, experience, more importantly, to, to get more success in the future. 
So last question because uh, we are going to run out of time, we will have to finish this function also. And that actually comes out from the last answer that you gave that getting right people is most important, right? right. All of us are human beings and therefore <coughs> as you said imperfect, work in progress. So how have you got people with complementary capabilities and yeah. how have you uh, managed to <coughs> leverage them so that collectively you have more than a whole? Yeah. While individually there may be gaps. Yeah. You know, uh, for any leader, I think that is one of the biggest job that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, because um, you know everybody have different competencies, and uh, uh, people are um, running multiple things, uh, multiple projects, multiple expertise. Uh, and uh, get them all together to work uh, uh, for that. First of all, uh, the people who are with you need to believe in you, right? People must think that uh, uh, that working with the, this this uh, this leader or this gentleman or this person need to gi give them value, because we all look up to our superiors. To give us guidance, or give us uh, that motivation, or give us that knowledge, or uh, a playground to play with authority and with uh, with uh, whatever support that they need from time to time. Uh, so, uh, you know, creating that ecosystem uh, for people to operate uh, in a very transparent and uh, in a very um, very um, uh, very uh, together, together manner. Uh, I'm not getting the right word. As a team, for example, right? They, they, they not only need to play, uh, think that I am the one who's only adding value. No, but the rest of the members of the team also are adding value, right? So it is always a 360 degrees. Everybody need to uh, work together, and that ecosystem is very important. So for that to happen, one need to have the right kind of a job description or right kind of a uh, put the right people at the right place, right job with the right um, knowledge and uh, expertise and um, making everybody appreciate why that, that person or that role is, is required in the organization uh, and uh, you know, everybody see there is value coming from that. Uh, because uh, you know, we work as an organization, not only we, most organizations work with a very strong financial prudence. Uh, you know, there is targets to be met. Uh, there is a budget that is set. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, financial uh, parameters and disciplines that to be, uh, that to be met. So when, when leaders have to <coughs> deliver numbers and deliver results, uh, they also need to see, uh, you know, the people around are all contributing and they're all adding value in their respective positions. Uh, otherwise, uh, it becomes, um, you know, I cannot be favoring or I cannot be partial. I have to be very fair. Uh, I have to be, uh, you know, obviously creating an environment of appreciation and reward and recognition on the basis of the, the contribution and the success. Uh, not just financially, also, you know, the people um, uh, helping the culture of the organization to get better. You know, that's also very important. Also, for example, uh, just making sure that the risks are mitigated or there are uh, taxation is well planned or a strategy is well defined and, you know, things like that. So everybody has an important role to play. Uh, and, and then that gets percolated down to, uh, to their own individual uh, domain or individual geography. And that is how the whole organization starts falling into place. Um, you know, I think uh, most important thing uh, is uh, is culture in an organization. I think uh, culture plays a very very important role. What culture you have, uh, that is what people either accept or don't accept. Uh, culture, if it is good, uh, it is easier for for people to commend um, commend uh, contribute because what culture does is uh, it takes a fight from inside the organization to outside the organization. Inside the organization, if there are issues, it is waste of time, waste of energy, 
it is damaging and taking the organization down. So it's like a disease. Uh, so uh, most people will agree here. I am very transparent. I am non apolitical. I I like people. Uh, I am I am generally uh, I I I you know I am uh, I am very humane, right? I am always there for people. I am always there to support, and uh, uh, I am always there to guide. Um, and I sympathize when things don't happen. I'm there to give people a second chance uh, or a third chance sometimes. Um, you know, uh, I, I generally believe in people and I generally uh, very much a people's person and I understand sometimes people's pain. Uh, yeah, there are occasions where I may have been insensitive sometimes, but uh, but end of the day I'm also a human being. We all make mistakes. So, you know, as long as you learn and you don't deliberately do um, uh, things which is um, which is uh, you know hitting below the belt they call right it's uh, not having dignity to people is something that i would never do um, and uh, i feel extremely happy when people grow in the organization um, so you know also i think in 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 a way for me the success is also uh, definitely a factor of being in the right place also at the right time uh, what we call as uh, uh, lucky, you, some people call it lucky, some people call it uh, blessings, uh, some calls it uh, good karma, you do a good thing, good will always come to you. Um, and um, you know, I think uh, it's, it's always a combination. I think I can't say that it is only one thing or two things, but there's many things which make you <coughs> where you are. Um, that's great. what it is. So, thank you very much. Thank you. And let me wish it's you and Al Cargo great continued business success and on your journey to becoming a great person.